Hello, Thameside. How are you? Um, I'm Miss Hardman. I'm Head of Science at Maiden Early Chilton Edge, which is your, the big school that's up the road. And I know some of you are coming to see us next year. So I'm going to carry on um, teaching uh, year six around the area and year fives and year fours around the area about science because I really love science and science is my passion. And we are passionate at Maiden Early Chilton Edge about communicating how great our school is and how great our subjects are. So um, I'm going to teach you a little bit about light. I know you've already done some, um, but I'm going to teach you a little bit about light today. OK, I've added some activities to do um, throughout this small presentation. So what am I going to cover? First of all, I'm going to cover what light actually is. And then we're going to look at different sources of light. So we're going to look at natural versus artificial man-made light sources. And then I'm going to talk a bit about when is light actually unhelpful? When do we not want any light? Because light is sometimes just always there, right, in the universe. And sometimes we don't want it at all. So I'm going to talk to you a bit about when light is actually really unhelpful and what we can do to prevent light uh, when it is being unhelpful. And um, number four, I'm going to leave that there and, and uh, show you some experiments that you can go and do at home. Um, so what uh, hopefully you can see on this slideshow is you can see um, some light there you can see um, some natural light and you can see some artificial light you can see some christmas lights in the middle image there and you can see the aurora borealis which is a natural kind of light show um, in the north of uh, in the north pole and um, you can see a jellyfish although i might be covering it which is bioluminescence which is my favorite thing about light and i hope for next year by the time some of you are year seven i hope to have some fish in my classroom that if we turn the light off they glow and they do bioluminescence which is really amazing okay um so yeah let's go for the first one what actually is light so uh in science and in secondary school we start talking about light as a wave so it's a wave that's like this and it comes from the sun to the earth okay light only ever travels in a straight direction so straight towards you and it may hit something like a mirror or it may hit something like your clothes or your face or something else and then the light will bounce back and it will be reflected into your eyes and that's why you can see. Now in secondary school we learn that light isn't just the stuff that we see, isn't just the waves or the energy, so you may have talked about it in the terms of energy, as the energy that comes to our eyes. We know that light actually can be broken down into different things. Um, so white light, which is the light that comes into our eyes and comes from the sun, can actually be broken down by a prism, which is a glass pyramid, um, into different colours. So the colours of the rainbow. That's how a rainbow works, which is a really amazing thing to know. The rain, when it's sunny and it's raining, the rain acts as tiny prisms. So each raindrop acts as a tiny prism and that splits up the light into red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo and violet, okay? So what I'd like you to do is to, I've added a, a YouTube link up on this slide and what would be really great if you could look at that because I think it's a really good explanation of light. And also objects. So there are objects in science that we need to know that are transparent, which means that they let the light through them. So they let the light through because they are transparent. And there are objects which are opaque, which don't let the light through, okay? So my challenge is, can you find some transparent and object, uh, opaque objects in your home? Okay, if you can, maybe you can show them um, to your teacher on the camera. Okay, so we're gonna look at the next slide, um, which is artificial versus uh, man-made sources of light. A source is something where light comes from, okay? So a source is where something comes from, so a source of light might be a torch or it might be a jellyfish that's a bioluminescent jellyfish, which is really amazing. OK, so we, in science, we say objects that give out light that are sources of light. They are luminescent objects and objects that are not sources of light. They are non-luminescent objects. So I myself and you yourself as humans, as homo sapiens, we are non-luminescent objects. But say a jellyfish that glows in the dark, that is a luminescent object, okay? Something that is glow in the dark is luminescent. Something that gives out light is luminescent. 
So what are the different sources of light? So you've got a picture on there which shows you lots of different sources. What I'd like you to do is to watch the video that's on here and can you make a list of 10 different sources? Once you have your list, could you divide them into natural and artificial uh, sources of light? So over there, you've got some in the picture, you've got some tricky ones. So some that don't give out light at all. So they are non-luminescent objects. Uh, some that do, do give light out. So they are luminescent objects. And then you've got the man-made luminescent objects, the artificial luminescent objects, and you've got the natural luminescent objects. OK, so can you find a list of 10 and then can you divide them into natural and artificial? That's your challenge now. OK, so when is light unhelpful? So I've already told you that light only travels in a straight direction. So light travels from the sun. If you look at uh, this, if you look at this diagram over here, um, so light only travels from the sun in one direction. And when it hits objects, um, it is reflected, which means it bounces back. OK, so light is coming, hitting something, bouncing back and going into my eye in a straight direction. And that's how I can see. I use the light that is reflected from objects to be able to see. I collect the light that is being reflected into my eyes and that's how I see. Now, if you think about the world wars and particularly World War II, there were planes flying over cities and they were looking at bombing, weren't they? So if you look here, here's a city that is devastated by bombing, right, in this picture here. So that city is devastated by bombing and the government in the UK, in, in Britain, they did not want that to happen. They were like, no, 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 we do not want the bombing. OK, so what they asked everyone to do was they asked everyone to do a blackout. And in the night time, um, during the Blitz, which was when there was the most amount of bombing in World War Two, um, the blackout was everyone had to turn their lights off. Why did they have to turn their lights off? Because if you think that if there was a city and there was no lights on and you're in a plane and you've got your bombs and you want to bomb that city, you're not going to be able to find it if um, if there's no lights. Because in that time, there was no there was no um, like GPS or sat nav or anything like that. Um, they used the lights below to tell them where they were. So they didn't know. Sometimes they thought they were over the sea and they bombed the sea by accident. And sometimes they thought they were in different places. So um, the blackout was really helpful to not tell people to not tell people um, where they were. So tell the pilots where they were and they save lots and lots of lives. So sometimes light is really unhelpful because it gives a clue. If you're trying to be secret, it's easier to be secret in the dark, isn't it? But we do need light for health and safety. And in London, what they did was uh, all around um, the, the country, what they did in World War II was they painted the curbs, the pavement curbs, they painted it white. I wonder why they painted it white. Maybe that's something you could research and then tell your teacher. Why did they paint the pavement white, do you think, if everything was dark in the night time? Some people in the night also still had to drive. So let's say politicians and people going to work and milkmen who delivered milk in the night time and things like that. But if you think about it, we didn't want the light to go straight up. So from the headlight, we didn't want the light to go straight up and then pilots in the, in the planes could see it. So the government released um, a, a, a law for people with headlights on their bikes and on their torches and on their cars. They had to make them like this. OK, what I'd like you to do um, is I'd like you to uh, experiment with a torch that you have at home and a piece of paper. Can you make a car uh, like a guard uh, like in World War Two and see what happens to the light? OK, see what happens to the light and why the government wanted everyone to use torches and headlights like the like these over here. Um, so that the pilots didn't know in the nighttime where they were. OK, so have a think about that. Have a go with that one. All right. OK, so we're almost at the end. Well done if you've done any of my challenges so far. I'm really excited about seeing any of your results. I'm sure I'm sure that your teachers can email me some of the results as well. Hopefully really soon I'll be able to come in and see you when we're back into schools normally. But have you wanted 
have you ever wondered some extra things about light? Don't worry, because we're going to study light quite a lot when you come to secondary school. But here's some extra things that you can do. Have you ever wondered how is it that we see in colour? Right. So if you've wondered about that, have a play with the um, online simulation of colour vision, which is a really great one. Why don't you try to find out why some things look like they bend where they're, when they're in water? If you put a straw in a glass of water, you'll see that it looks like it's separated. Um, have a look at why that is and what that experiment is. Have you ever blown a bubble? I blow bubbles a lot for my baby, baby girl. Um, why it looks very colourful when you blow a bubble. I wonder why. OK, so have a look about why that is. And if you like rainbows, you can make your own rainbow inside. And uh, that's the last link on there. So I really hope, oh, that's my school bell. I really hope that you are able to do some of these things and you've enjoyed my little tiny assembly. And uh, I really look forward to coming and seeing you soon. And I really look forward to see, seeing some of your World War torches that, uh, pilot, that means pilots can't see the lights on your torches and bomb sun in common. <sighs> um, OK, so uh, yeah, so I hope you have a really good day. And um, thank you for letting me give you an assembly today. All right. Bye, guys.